Hello everybody, my name is Wolfgang Hanken and I'm sitting here with Luke Ursell, who is from Boulder, Colorado, uh, Robert Knight's um, working group, I think. Yeah, Rob Knight. And uh, first of all, let's start. Uh, so how was your trip? My trip was good. Um, I made it fine and the, the flights were uneventful. Um, so it was good. Glad to be here. You ju arrived just yesterday. Um, what are your first impressions about the campus and Bremen and the surroundings? Yeah, it's gorgeous here. It was a little bit rainy yesterday, but the campus is uh, fantastic and everything is green. And given that there's fires in Colorado at the moment, it's nice to, to be here where, <laughs> where there are no fires. <laughs> But you're a little unlucky with the weather. Last week we had uh, sunshine. Mm -hmm. um, this this week it's a little cloudy and rainy. I hope it it get, gets better. So long. How long are you going to stay here? I'll be leaving on Thursday, so just a few days here at the the short course. And when is your talk? Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Yeah. So maybe you can uh, talk a little bit about your scientific background. What will the talk be about? Yeah. So I'm a, currently a graduate student in Rob Knight's lab. Uh, at the University of Colorado Boulder, and I'm interested in, in uh, uh, microbiome and uh, microbiome studies, um, in particular um, uh, multi-omics integration, so taking the microbiome data and maybe metabolomic data or the, the metagenome data and integrating that uh, specifically in human health um, and, or clinical situations. So what I'll talk about tomorrow will be the CHIME uh, workflow the Chime database and uh, the scripts that we have for analyzing uh, 16S uh, ribosomal RNA um, sequences in terms of community composition. So the, um, my studies and the projects I'm involved in mainly look at microbial communities in and on the human body, but the, the methods um, that we use could easily be uh, applied to environmental samples um, as well. Have you talked to the um, participants of the course already, or I mean, you're only here for a couple of hours. Um, so, what is your f first impressions about the participants? It looks like the participants come from a wide range of backgrounds. I've only spoken to a few of them so far, but I really hope to to meet uh, hopefully everyone uh, during the course of the next few days. Uh, but it is exciting to see so many people from so many different universities here. Um, talking to one another and I always like when you have different backgrounds coming together because then uh, they really complement each other. So this is not only a theoretical but also a practical course. Mm -hmm. um, are you also uh, involved in the, the practical part or uh, you are giving the talk and then or are you also otherwise in, involved? So? No, so I'll be doing both. So in the morning I'll give an overview of CHIME and a lot of the theoretical and um, considerations we have for our workflow. Uh, and then I think for the rest of the day we'll be doing practical um, hands-on experience. So we have a tutorial data set that we'll go through. Um, we'll take it from taking the raw sequences that you would get off of the, uh, any uh, next-gen sequencer like 454 or the Lumina or MySeq. And then we'll work that through building of OTU tables and then as well as some visualization techniques and statistical analysis on those training sets. That sounds good. And what are the um, take-home messages that you would like to deliver in your talk? And uh, what, what, what is this, the, the main things that the students are supposed to learn in the course? Um, for my section, uh, I would really like the students to just understand um, the different uh, techniques and the power of some of these tools and the fact that um, Chime strives to be very, uh, is very open source, so you can integrate the trees that you're building in Silva, um, or the sequences that you're collecting from uh, somewhere else. Also, there's um, the talk for if you have your data uh, and you process it in Chime, you can then upload it to the MGRAS server and do additional analyses there. Um, so I would, um, and also for the fact that uh, we're, we're really encouraging um, new ideas. So if you have any, um, if anyone develops interesting tools or techniques or algorithms, for the study of microbial communities, then we would love to implement those in Chime as well. And so uh, it really is a, still a work in progress. It gets better with every release. And so um, if there's any, um, any features that they would like to see in the program, um, to, to contact us and we can uh, work to make those a possibility. So you are also here to start some collaborations and uh, you know, with, with the participants, if somebody approaches you and has a nice idea, you will also um, adjust to that and then maybe start the yeah, project? Yeah, definitely. Some, um, I mean, people are working on really interesting projects and they have 
uh, questions or they're um, coming up with situations that we haven't thought of yet, which is why maybe the tools and techniques are not currently included in Chime. Um, but I think through you know, organizing fantastic groups of people together, like in this course, we can start to uh, make those connections and, and, and put the, the people who have the data sets collected and the individuals and labs who are developing the tools, we can put them together and, and do really good science. So what do you think about this um, concept of the short course in general? It's uh, two weeks and there are students from all over the world. And do you th really think, I mean, bioinformatics is uh, complex and it's a steep learning curve. Do you mm -hmm. think it makes sense to, um, to put people from all backgrounds together and then uh, try to teach them like in a kind of a crash course on the basics? Yeah, I think it's, well, it's very worthwhile. Uh, for instance, we did a two-week uh, course on Chime in Bangladesh. And we, there we presented to uh, statisticians and, and clinicians and people who had never uh, used a command line before. And at the end of those two weeks, you could really see that they had grasped a good deal of the concepts and they were uh, comfortable with Chime. Here, there's people who have already um, have publications in looking at microbial communities and, and, and metagenomics. So I feel confident that they'll be able to pick it up pretty quickly. And um, having a situation like this where they're exposed to different tools and the pros and cons of each tool and uh, maybe they can determine for themselves what tools are beneficial for their own projects I think is a really good format. And um, it's also a joint effort, a EU-US workshop. Mm -hmm. So um, what do you think about the collaboration? What needs to be done to make this successful also for the future? Uh, I think the, the first step of getting these individuals in one place has already been taken. Um, as far as any collaboration, I think follow up after the meeting and uh, continuing to build on the ideas that might have been brought together or continuing to do the work um, that was brought up at this meeting. So just the, the follow up of you know, maintaining the connections that were established here and, um, and hopefully seeing each other at future conferences or at future short course meetings. So from your po point of view, it's mainly networking. Um, but what about the political part? Do you think there can be maybe some decisions on, on funding or, or how uh, larger projects are going to proceed? Um, do you think this is also the right place to do this kind of uh, decisions or is it more about networking and making contacts? And I think um, you know, the making contacts can lead to all sorts of um, different situations. So um, I do believe that it's possible that um, those kinds of talks could get started uh, at, a, at a short course. Um, thanks a lot for your time you. and for answering the questions patiently and have a nice meeting. Thanks.